because loving us, God, they can be in some kindness, God, God, and man, God won't forgive us, oh God, we know that you are a forgiving God. We love you, we thank you, we trust you, God. We pray for God for King his wife. We pray this morning that you will continue, God, to crown his head, God, with wisdom and other understanding, Lord God. We thank you for his, God, his freaking power, Lord God, this morning, God. We anoint the word of God that's going to go forth, Lord God, that will touch so heart, God, touch heart and mind all across this nation, this world, and this country, Lord God. And we love you, we thank you. We praise your holy name, God, that you will get the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' awesome name, we pray. Amen. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Just want to share a word with you from the two days, uh, 9 and 11. The word of God said, the race is not given to the twelve, nor to the strong, but the one and do it to the end. You know, I just, I, I thought about that verse this morning, you know, I'm, um, that, 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 that's a great, you know, that's a great scripture to hold on to because at times, you know, when you want to give up, you know, you know the word of God said, the race is given to the twelve, you know, the twelve is the one that, that's not really strong, but God is standing right there to give him strength. You know, God is the one that, it's confident in the that you know, that don't give up, you know, I'm right here, you know. It, 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 you know, if you give up, you know, you won't get to where you want to be. You know, I need you to keep moving. I need you to keep pressing forward. I need you to keep, you know, trusting me and believing in me, you know, and know that I'm God. He said, she said, he said, uh, he said, he said, he said be still and know that I am God. You know, sometimes you run around and you do uh, things and try to talk to people, you know, about our situation and problems, you know, and sometimes we get to stop, you know, in the midst of all we're going through. And listen to the Holy Spirit that God has placed on the inside of us, you know, and, 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 and every day that the Holy Spirit is speaking to us, you know, tell us to do one thing and we turn around and do another. But, you know, sometimes, sometimes it's like us, you know, we're in this modern day, we get like the children of Israel, you know, God has, has given us a journey that's only for the last maybe three hours or three days or, or a little while. But we turn that journey into a year and, you know, a month and, you know, an hour because we, we, we Still listen to what God is trying to tell us. God is trying to tell us to go this way, you know, but our flesh is trying to tell us to go another way because, you know, once we lose our flesh, that, 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 that walk, that, that assignment that God gave us, it lasts a little while longer than it's supposed to be. But, you know, but if we only just stop and listen to God and, 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 you know, and realize that and when, when God is talking to us, you know, because mm-hmm. it might be, you know my voice and he will not heed to the voice of a stranger. You know, sometimes that stranger voice gets a little louder than, you know, than the host of voice. Or Holy Spirit, because you know what God said, a small, still voice. You know, God is that small, still voice. So we have to continue to ask God every day, Lord, let, let us hear that small, still voice. Lord, clear our mind and our conscience that we will hear from you, that we hear that we hear your voice and not the voice of the enemy. So I want to continue to, you know, ask you to continue to, you know, to call upon God, you know, and, and press your way into the presence of God, even when you're tired, even when you feel like, you know, it, you know, it's too late in the evening, but, you know, you know, no matter when you come to God, He's the same God. Because He said, "I'm the I'm the Lord that God. I change." Now He said, "I'm the same today, tomorrow, and forevermore." No matter if, if you meet God right here on this prayer line, or tomorrow at, at one o'clock, He's the same God. You know, it, you know, it, it, it's like the, the uh, thief on the cross. You know, He didn't meet God in His younger days, but He but He met God in a time when He was going to go home. You know, when 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 God was He would you know to call him home to take His last breath. He, he accepted the God right there on the cross. You know, he had done all those things wrong during his life. But at, at that moment, at that moment, when he realized who Christ was, who Jesus was, he said, Lord, when you're coming to your kingdom, he didn't ask God and bring him with the God. This is God. I want you to remember me, God, when you're going to your, your kingdom. So no matter when you meet God, no matter when you decide you want to live to God, God is that saying, God, he, he won't change on it. He won't turn it back on you. But he'll, but he'll do what he needs to do for his child. Because, you know, God loves us that much. <clears throat> Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Lord, give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Whoa, give me you. Mm. Say that with me. Give me you. Give me you. Lord, give me you. Mm. Give me you. Say that with me. Everything else can wait. Thank you, Lord.
Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Say it one more time. Lord, give me you. Come on, say it with me. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Everything else can wait. <laughs> give me you. Hope I'm not too late. Come on, clap your hand, everybody. Give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. I tell you the truth, people of God, I am so excited. Friday fire, Dr. Lawrence North Sea, Centerville, Mississippi. Uh, without fail, each and every time, the man of God takes us to a place and a space where we need to be in God. Amen, amen. He literally allows the Holy Spirit to use him in setting the stage. Amen. As we go, listen, as we go into the weekend, we need some fire. We need fire. Write that down. We need fire, y'all. We need fire going into the weekend because the enemy look like to me, I don't know about you, but looks like to me, <clears throat> the enemy becomes even more fierce uh, the closer we get to Sunday morning. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, look like all hell break loose. <laughs> oh, but my Bible tell me the kingdom of God suffered violence. Hmm. Yet the violent take it by force. Come on, some we, we need to, amen. We need to start standing tall with God <clears throat> and declaring and decreeing that no weapon, mm, Lord Jesus, oh, no weapon, no weapon. Deaconess Jesse said that the other day. Oh my God, in the midst of a prayer, as she was praising God, she said, Lord, no weapon. Mm, no weapon that is formed against me shall be able to prosper. Good God. Hello, somebody. Good morning to you, Facebook family, prayer line family, YouTube family. I hope you are ready for the word of God because we're getting ready to dive in into Exodus. Turn that Bible, Exodus chapter number 23. Exodus, come on, Exodus. Let's go now. Exodus chapter number 23, we are ready to go in Jesus' name. We are ready to go. want to say good morning to each and every person in this place. You still have time to tag somebody, to share, to like. I want you to be liking uh, there, uh, commenting, uh, most importantly, commenting there on Facebook and uh, like, share, share with somebody uh, right now. If you're on Facebook, share. Uh, if you're on prayer line, send a quick text message to somebody. Let them know uh, that simply the word is in worship. Amen. This is our Friday Fire edition here live in living color across this nation, this world, and this country. We have individuals that call in that are part of our family virtually uh, by way of Facebook, YouTube, and prayer line every Tuesday and Friday morning, 8.15 a.m. Central time, all of our times are central. Watch the time zones in your area. Also, every Wednesday, 12 high noon. Praise God. Amen. And, um, you know, our Wednesday attendance is a little shaky, you know, a little, <clears throat> little inconsistent. And, and that's because, uh, you, you know me, I just say it like it is. And that's because the people of God have not yet, some of us have not yet made that a priority uh, by virtue of the fact that it is in the middle of the day, in the middle of the week. Amen. And so, um, you know, you, you have to you have to just, you know, make that commitment and say, listen, I don't care what I'm doing. Amen. I don't want nobody to lose their job. now. <laughs> Simply the word can't pay you a house note. We can't pay. We can't. <laughs> don't come crying to us. We're making it very clear. Don't lose your job. Amen. Don't don't do that. But but uh, amen. Make that commitment if at all possible, to be in the house on Wednesday, 12 high noon. Um, 62nd National Prayer Call is every day at 12 high noon, every day, uh, two plus years now, uh, I believe, no, uh, almost two years. Uh, in, in, um, we started in March of 2020, yeah, yeah. This coming March will be two years, every day, 62nd National Prayer Call, for live broadcast, amen, streaming across this nation, this world, and this country. And so 
So we're excited about that platform of prayer as well and the word of God that goes forth in that area. Praise God. Amen. I want to, in the onset, uh, before I go too far, want to um, uh, recognize our birthdays very quickly. Amen. Want to shout out a great big birthday to our own man of God, our brother. Amen. Brother Henry London in the house. Clap your hand, Brother Henry London. Amen. Today is his birthday. Praise the name of the Lord. And we want to shout that uh, that uh, 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 birthday out to the man of God who is a part of our family. Amen. Who's a part of our family. Praise God. Consistently calling in and uh, making himself available, making the sacrifice. And let me say this. Brother Henry, it's no, you know, it's no, um, it's no secret. He is on dialysis, you know, and uh, I think it's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, he's in the, the dialysis center. And um, what blesses me, and I, and I believe it blesses God, is the fact that, you know, he's, he's lying there on the table, hooked up to a machine, but he's on the prayer line. Y'all missing me. Y'all miss it. Don't look at me funny because you ain't hooked up to no machine and you ain't on the prayer. Y'all don't like me. Y'all, let me move on. I ain't even, I ain't even started teaching yet and I made you mad already. Come on now. Don't get mad. Love me the way I love you. I wish I had a church. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Blesses me. It blesses me. My God, my God, my God, my God. We're going to take care of this. Also want to send a shout out to Deacon Ray, uh, the big eight zero, eight zero, a man, 80 years young. Isn't that a blessing? Isn't it a blessing? 80 years young. My God, my God. And the man don't look a day over 60. <laughs> Amen. God is good, y'all. God will keep you, man. I'm so serious. He'll do it. He'll, he'll keep you. He'll keep you. Hey, man, praise God. You got a birthday. You and are, you are your immediate family member. We're moving fast. Got to go to the Word. You got a birthday this week, uh, this week through the weekend. Uh, uh, early this week. We missed it early this week uh, through the weekend. Um, um, text that in. Post it on Facebook. Um, uh, you know, send that to Sister Carol. Do, do whatever you need to do so we can get it because we want to send that shout out, amen, to you. We want to call you, be able to call your name. Uh, praise God. It is October. Today is October 1st. And, uh, uh, you know, this, this is my month. Don't, don't look at me funny. You had your month. You, <laughs> you had, I didn't say nothing to you and you had your month. Come on. You, this is my month. <laughs> I wish I had a witness in here. This, tell your neighbor, this is his month. This, amen. <laughs> Praise God. October 17th, the Lord let me live. I'll be 35 backwards. 35 backwards, October 17th. Be the will of God. Amen. So excited about that. And um, also thinking about right now is, um, amen, part of our crew, uh, my best, I say best friend, uh, part of our part of our best friend crew, you know, uh, best friend, of course, October 17th, BFF, Calvin Matthews Jr., also on the 17th, and uh, we'll be shouting that out a little bit later. Uh, we, it's too far away now. We just mentioned it now because it's on my mind. Also, uh, uh, Brother Richard London Jr., part of our crew, amen, uh, was back in May, then Yolanda Wilson, amen. Part of our crew, amen, October 6th, October 6th. I won't forget that, amen, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, praise God. So we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we're on assignment today, so we wanna, uh, we wanna be able to definitely use our time uh, wisely on today as we always try to do. Uh, amen. I want to say good morning to I pray that some of our faithful folk are in, in the house by way of Facebook. Very quickly, if y'all give me 33 more seconds, I want to send that shout out uh, to just a few people who that I may be able to see. 
uh, on Sister Carolyn White. Amen. Sister Carolyn White there on Facebook. Bless you of God. Sister Stacy Sensley, part of our family as well. Amen. Woman of God, Linda Ward, my cousin. Love you. Love you. Good morning. Good morning. Sister Diane Williams. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Amen. So we're going to move on to the word, y'all. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The word is waiting on us. Let's go. Exodus 23. And uh, we shall commence on today in 28. Verse number 28. The children of Israel are still receiving instructions from God. These instructions, I might add, and I want to remind us, these instructions are coming directly from the mouth of God, okay? Directly from the mouth of God. Y'all hear me? Amen. It makes a difference when man gives you instruction, um, <clears throat> and it's a difference between man, the instructions of man. Watch this here. There's a different, very distinct difference between the instruction of man and the instructions of God. Amen. Amen. Because uh, when, when, we, when we compare the two, uh, the instruction of God, there are spiritual consequences. Are you with me? If we obey them, uh, you know, good things follow. If we, we disobey uh, God's instruction, then, you know, y'all know the opposite of that is. Amen. The opposite of good is bad. Hello, somebody. And, and there's no in-between there. God does not play. God does not play games and, you know, uh, you know, ring around the rosy. You know, y'all know game we used to pray with <laughs> hopscotch and all, you know, and hide and go seek. God don't play no game now. I want us to know it. He's real. He's serious about his commands. So he's serious here, even uh, dealing with them in this season. Listen to what he says now, 28, and I will send hornets before you, okay, which shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite from before you. Now, these are these groups of the enemies that are mentioned here in this, um, in this particular verse, and, and the Lord is saying unto them, all you have to do is follow my command. I, I, I need you to go. I need you to go. And watch this here. I'm going to clear the path. And I'm going to use hornets. Amen. Hornet. Y'all know what a hornet. Hornet is something like a bumblebee, right? I, I, I will send hornets before. Now, it's amazing that the Lord, you know, somebody said, why would God want to use hornets? What is the significance? Well, you know what? What the Lord is saying unto them and to us even today is, is that he wants to make it clear that he has the entirety of creation at his own disposal. God can use a fly ha! to chase your enemy. Y'all missing me. Remember now when the 10 plagues came? And we talked about the 10 plagues. I'm about to get happy. But we talked about the 10 plagues that the Lord uh, uh, issued, brought upon, uh, actually they brought upon themselves, the Egyptians uh, uh, in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh, remember when Moses kept the Lord kept sending Moses and Aaron back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. He said, okay, now, if you do what I tell you to do, if you let my people go, you know, it's okay. If you don't let them go, I'm going to do this. And, and every time Pharaoh would make a broken promise uh, and all that, say, okay, I'm going to let them go. Then he would not let them go. So God would end up, uh, and then Moses go back. Moses go back to God and say, well, I told Pharaoh what you said, but <laughs> he, first he said he was going to do it, but then he ended up not doing it. So, so, so what am I going to do? So the Lord said, okay, that's easy. I told you to tell him what I was going to do. So I'm, 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 I'm a God of my, listen, when I say something, I mean it. So this is what I'm going to do. So he would send the plague in order to get their attention, right? This time the Lord says, I will send hornets before you. Write this down. The God we serve has always had and still has the entirety of creation at his disposal. Are you with me? Amen. God is so powerful, he can speak to a mosquito. Good God. Y'all missing the preacher here. The Lord uh, here uses, he, he can use anything 
as he sees fit to use it. So he could take something as small as a hornet and use it as a great big army. Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. it's, I'm in your Bible. I'm in your, I'm not only in my Bible, I'm in yours too. Are y'all with me? So what make you think that the Lord can't handle your enemy? That's all I'm trying to say. That's a good question. I'm polling the house this morning. Somebody here in this in the church this morning got trouble in their home, got trouble on the job, got trouble in the church. You got trouble everywhere. Look like everywhere you go, there's trouble. But you're so busy worrying. You're worried. You're weary. Come on. You're wailing. You're wondering. You're trying to figure out how am I going to get through this? How am I going to handle my enemy? The secret that you have not yet tapped into is this. Turn your enemy over to the Lord. Do y'all hear me? God is so powerful <clears throat> that, that, that your enemy could be on his way <clears throat> with, with, with a, with a sawed-off shotgun in his hand to blow your brains out. And the Lord is so powerful that the Lord would cause that individual to come down with a severe illness to, to, to redirect their pain. I wish I had somebody. Turn your enemies over to God. And he'll work it out. I know that's right. I know it. I've done it too many times. And he come through every time. Every time the Lord has come through. Amen. 29. I will not drive them out from before you in one year. Stay, stay there. Lest the land become desolate. Okay. And the beast of the field, uh, that word desolate is in the family of famine. Um, uh, when, where they are, are less fortunate, the basic needs or necessities cannot be met. And the beast of the field multiply against you. Okay. Watch this. By little and little, I will drive them out from before you until you be increased and inherit the land. All right. Now, we got to understand that, uh, and I want to make this point as I relate it even over to the book of Judges. Okay. Um, the intent of God was for the children of Israel to be obedient unto his command, completely obedient unto his command. God delivers unto them very specific instructions. Uh, there's no wavering. There's no, you know, you can't go to the left, no, go to the right. Uh, you, you just walk straight down the line uh, according to the, the word of God. They did not do that. Had they done that, the sufferings, y'all, the sufferings that uh, they endured uh, uh, relative, as we see in the book of Judges for the Bible reader. Now, student of the word know what I'm talking about. You that, you that are not a student of the word, you're kind of lost right here. You kind of, you kind of wonder, what are you talking about? What are you talking about in the book of Judges? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, but, but those sufferings would not have had to, to be endured had the children of Israel been more completely obedient uh, in fulfilling God's command. Now, let me say this, and I'm not going to stay here, but I just want to touch it. Uh, as we learn uh, through the book of Judges, uh, th that was an ongoing sin cycle. Write that down. In the book of Judges, we find the sin cycle, S-I-N. Okay? And let me, let me very quickly touch that and get off of it. What I mean by sin cycle, God gives an instruction they promise to obey. They obey for a season. Then they turn back. All right. God says unto them, if you obey my word, I'm going to bless you. All right. They obey for a season. God blesses them. Watch this. Then they disobey. They turn back on God. Okay. And so then in the midst of their sin, amen, in the midst of their sin, God ultimately extends his hand of grace unto them, okay? Because the God we serve is so full of grace, right? He's, he's just so full of grace. And so uh, after his grace is, is extended, then their eyes are opened again, say, 
we serve a pretty good God. We might as well do what he said. So then they flip it again and they begin uh, to obey the Lord. So that goes on and on, in and out, uh, over and over again throughout the book of Judges. And that's why we call it a sin cycle, because there is an ongoing cycle of sin that we see in the book of Judges. <clears throat> Had the children of Israel, allow me to reiterate once again, Sister Paula Reed, God bless you. Allow me to reiterate once again, had they been more completely obedient in the fulfillment of God's command, the suffering that they endured would not have been. Y'all with me? All right. All right. So the Lord said, by little and little, I will drive them out from before you until you be increased and inherit the land. God is determined to bless us, man. He was determined to bless them. You see it? God said, I'm going to do every, everything I can. The Lord said, I'm giving the land to you. Do your hand like this, Facebook. Do it like this. Do it like, come on, do it like this. Y'all not do it. <laughs> do it like this. Help me now. Help me preach. Do it like this. The Lord said, I'm giving you the land on a silver platter. Isn't nothing so great you had to do to receive it? I'm not selling it to you. Y'all miss me. It's not a loan. Come on. Amen. But you're my people, so I'm going to bless you. That's what the Lord said. Only thing I ask of you, obey my command. That's it. Why is it so difficult? And I'm talking about all of us, me included. Why is it so difficult for us? Come on, church, and help me right here. I'm trying to figure it out. Maybe you know something I don't know. Why is it so difficult for us to obey the command of God? 31. And I will set your bounds from the Red Sea. All right? Um, even unto the Sea of the Philistines, uh, that is uh, referencing the Mediterranean area, okay? Just, just a side note, just a side note, okay? And from the desert, all right? It's not dessert. Now, dessert has two S's. <laughs> Here we go. So we learn it. English, you know, English lesson. We learn it all in simply the word. We have English lesson and all that, amen? That's desert, y'all. Y'all with me? And from, uh, amen, and from the desert. Y'all with me? King James Version say desert. And from the desert. Now that is marking the eastern boundary line, which in modern day would, uh, would be around Saudi Arabia. Okay. All right. And from the, they say, and from the desert unto the river. Okay. The river, uh, the river Euphrates. Just as a side note, which the river Euphrates marked, in essence, the northern boundary. So we are speaking of the eastern boundary and the northern boundary. God want to give it, uh, give it all to them. He said, I will set your bounds from the Red Sea, even to the Sea of the Philistines and from the desert to the river. For I will, for I will um, deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand and you shall drive them out, you shall drive them out before you. So as we can see here from this verse, people of God, and also from other verses is that um, Israel was promised much more than uh, what, what they, than, 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 than what they actually uh, attained, okay? They was promised more than what they actually attained. What do you mean by that, Reverend? Okay. What I mean by that is the Lord promised them so much, but they didn't get it all because they disobeyed him. With me? And we always we know, talk a lot about the promised land and all that. Yes, they entered into the promised land. Yes, they received the land, but they only received the portion, really. When you study scripture, they did not receive all of the land that God had promised simply because of their disobedience. Y'all with me? 
We need to understand that we're living in a sinful world. We're living in a world full of sin, even as believers. That's why the apostle Paul said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. And, and, so, and so that we understand that we're in the world, but we ought not be of the world. We as believers are in this world and this world is a fallen world. Mm-hmm, yes, yes. This world, watch this here. What do you mean, preacher? This world is being ruled by the prince of darkness. Beelzebub, this, 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 this world is being ruled by the prince of darkness, write that down, by the devil, by Satan and his army. Come on, talk to me. The enemy is still loose, y'all. Are you trying to figure out why we have so much killing in the street? You sitting there trying to find out why that precious two-year-old baby girl, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, just a few days ago. Precious two-year-old baby girl, Neve. I think her name was Neve. I think I got the name right. Hmm. I don't know what happened because I wasn't there and you either. <laughs> but all I know is the baby, the baby's gone. Precious two-year-old baby gone. They found her dead body somewhere in Mississippi. Y'all, y'all missing me. Now she ain't walked there. Yep. She didn't walk to Mississippi. Y'all missing me. Stop trying to figure out stuff. We're living in a fallen world. Are y'all with me? Boyfriend arrested. A couple of days later. Biological mother arrested. Both of them charged with second degree murder. Google it, baby. You'd have to cross the nation. You say, I ain't never heard of that. I know some somebody's in the house today from Florida, from California. Uh, Sister Wanda Charles, Vallejo, California. I know you never heard of you haven't heard it, baby, because you're on the West Coast. Google it. That's a sad thing. It's not just happening in Louisiana. Uh, it, it's happening all over. It's all happening all over the world. Look at look at all the detriment. Look 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 at all the destruction. Look look at look at what's going on in Haiti. Look at it. See, we need to be aware of what's going on, y'all. But the Lord says something so very profound. Good God. Second Chronicles chapter seven. With my people. That's me and you, you know. <laughs> if my people. You consider yourself his people? Do what that means you too? Hello. If my people. Mm. <laughs> will humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways. Mm. Then, woo, woo. let me go on. Oh, my God, my God. Much of the responsibility is on the church. Much of it is on the church. Mm -hmm. The Lord is waiting on us, y'all. Somebody say, waiting on us to do what? To obey him. This world is so full of selfish pride and, oh my God, you know, and, 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 and so much hatred and malice and envy. It, it, it's just, it's so full of the, the, evil, the evil spirit. It, it's just so full of it, y'all. So full of jealousy. Raise your hand if you know somebody who just je walk around with a jealous spirit. No? <laughs> You know, they can't rejoice with you, you know. You say, you know, man, the Lord blessed me with a new job. I'm telling you, he blessed me, got promotion. My God, the Lord is really blessed. You know, and on the outside, they're smiling, but on the inside, I ain't happy for her. You know why? 
because they're jealous. They want it for themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you can't, you can't, you look, you can't, you, you can't, you can't show folk your new car. You, you can't, man, you can't, <laughs> you can't, you can't show folk your new car. I wish I had a witness. Y'all missing me. Y'all, y'all, I've tested, I've told this story, but I'm going to tell it again. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell it again. <laughs> I'm going to tell it again. I'm going to tell it again. Amen. Amen. Uh, true story. My God. My, I laugh. You know, you got to just laugh at the devil. Um, it was a, um, it was a, um, trying to be as vague as I can without, <clears throat> without giving it away. It, it, it was a, it was a, it was a celebration, a major celebration <clears throat> at, at, um, at our church. I'm not gonna say which church, because I, I I have passed to three three local churches. I'm not gonna say which one, and uh, it was a major celebration, and um, and the Lord had just blessed. Uh, I don't know, we don't even have this car anymore, but it was a BMW. <clears throat> it was it was a BMW. Lord had just blessed my wife and I with a BMW, and uh, and we and we and we drove up to to the church. Um, a, a church I pastored now. Uh, they, 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 don't, don't shame my game. Just be honest. A church, I was the pastor of the church. And um, or, or, or still is the pastor of this church. I'm going to say it like that. Amen. And um, um, and um, and we and we pulled up and and uh, and uh, we just we just sitting there for a minute, hadn't got out yet, and 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 I heard the uh, I, I mean I um I had a crack in the window. Had a crack in the window, and um, young lady, um, young lady, uh, and a, a young lady said to a man. A, a lady said to a man. A lady said to a man. She said, she said, um, Pastor got a new car, you know, like that. Pastor got a new car, and 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 I'm just acting like I didn't, you know. I just want to see where this thing is going, you know, and and. Uh, and the uh, and the man said, <clears throat> "I guess so," you know, like that. And 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 uh, the lady said, "What happened to the other car?" You know, so I'm, I'm like, I'm like, hold up now, you know, you 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 what 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 what's really going on here? What what what's really going on? <laughs> you know, what I'm saying, you know. So <clears throat> and 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 the guy said, "I don't know." Which, which he didn't, you know, he was just answering her question. But <clears throat> it was evident that, you know, that that jealous spirit was so strong, you know, and, 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 and I, you know, I just, just kind of smiled, you know, kind of, <clears throat> kind of looked at my wife, kind of smiled, you know, kind of brushed it off and went on and we had a great day of celebration and I went on, got out of the car and stuff like that. But, but that stuck with me. That stuck with me. That's a true story. That's a true story. Show you how folk, and I'm, we're in the text here, just, you know, just talking about this evil spirit, how that, we was talking about how that, how we live as believers. We're living in a fallen world. And, and then we, you know, graduate over to uh, the fact of understanding God is waiting on the church. Now, now we are so-called believers, but yet some of us walk around with this spirit, these evils. Galatians 5, you see, we missed this part. Galatians 5, I want you to go there. Good God. Lord, I didn't mean to do all it. Galatians 5, I'm not going to even turn there. Galatians 5 <clears throat> deals with the fruit of the spirit, around 22, 23 verse. All right. You can check it now. You can check it later. Galatians 5 deals with the fruit of the spirit. Okay. In other words, the good stuff. But here's what we miss. Galatians 5 also deals with the bad stuff. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, it does. Check it when you get time. Let's move on. Check it when you get time. Check it when you get time. Hello, somebody. All right. <clears throat> Look at um, 32. You shall make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. See that gods again, a lower, lower G, uh, 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 lowercase G, which is a false god. 
which is an idol god. Okay, we've talked about that several times. The thing we need to get here is that God is adamant about uh, every enemy being, being uprooted out of the land. Every enemy. So why do we have enemies? Remember, now I'm gonna have to go back to Genesis on you. Remember when, when, remember now, remember when they were in the garden, Adam and Eve, and man fell? You know, say fail, he didn't fall down physically. He fell by he fell from his grace. He fell to sin. S I N. He disobeyed God. Remember? Amen. And y'all know the story. We talked about walk through it. The great deception. And, and God, God had had Adam, Eve, and the devil lined up in a row, like three little bad children. We talked about this. He dealt with one. He said, now you may be dismissed. Gave him his punishment. He dealt with the other. The second, you may be dismissed. You got your punishment. Get out of my face. And he, and he kicked all three of them out of the garden. It's in your Bible. When he got with the devil, when he, when he, when he, when he made it to, when he you know, had the enemy stand before him, he gave the enemy his, he said, now on your belly, you shall go. Y'all missing me. Eat the dust. You're good for nothing. Get out of my face. Ah! It's in your Bible. So the Lord is allowing the enemy to be loose. Now, when God get ready, shut it down. God got power to shut the devil down, but he ain't not ready yet. That's why the devil. Do. So we got to understand, y'all. My mind go back to that two-year-old baby. Precious baby, innocent baby. You know, and, and you may wonder, um, why could a God so good allow such a thing? Mm -hmm. Pastor King, you're always talking about the goodness of God. I, I, I'm in church every Tuesday and Friday morning, 8.15 a.m. Central Standard Time. I'm in church every Wednesday, 12 high noon Central Time. I'm even in the local church with you. 9 a.m. By the way, we'll be at the McEwen Church this Sunday, 9 a.m. Let's just plug that for free. Amen. Holy Communion worship this Sunday at the McEwen Church. All right. And everywhere, everywhere I turn, Pastor King, you're always talking about how good God is. How could a God that good allow such a thing? Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord have mercy. Well, my response to that is this. Not only do we serve a God that's good, and I mean really good. He's an awesome God. He's a mighty God. He's a forgiving God. He's a merciful God. Not, not only do we serve that kind of God, but we also serve a God uh, that, that has the master plan. We don't know what the master plan is. Come on. We don't know. We don't know what to do. You know, when you get ready to build a house, <clears throat> the builder is not going to start breaking ground until you've approved the blueprint. You're the owner. You have to sign off on the blueprint. You tell the builder where you want your bedrooms. Come on. He don't tell you. That's the difference between us and God. That's the difference between the world system and God's system. God don't have to get nothing approved by us. Whatever he wants to do, whatever he wants to allow, he does it according to his will. Woo! How can a God so good allow Right at 700,000 people to die from COVID. Let me repeat it. How can a God so good allow just about almost 700,000 people to die from COVID? He has the master plan. That's my answer. God knows what he's doing. And I tell you one thing, I'll tell you another thing. He makes no mistakes. Everything good, he causes it 
Write this down. Everything bad, he allows it. Come on. Come on. We, we, look, church, let me tell you something, church. We don't have time to be trying to be a rocket scientist and all of that, trying to figure stuff out like that. Amen. Just leave it in the hand of the Lord. Turn it over to him. He got it all figured out. It's already, while we're trying to figure it out, write this down. The Lord has already worked it out. You're trying to figure your enemy out. Come on. God already worked it out. I wish I had some. See, you don't have to understand Johnny. Just understand the devil that's working through Johnny. <laughs> you ain't got to understand Sally. Come on, y'all. Just understand the enemy that's causing Sally to do you to do the things she's doing to you. I'm trying to move. <clears throat> Every enemy. Verse 32, must be uprooted out of the land. That's what we get from that. That's what we get from that. He says unto them, make no covenant with them. Don't make any agreement with them, nor with their gods. Same thing God is trying to do in our lives. <clears throat> he wants every enemy to be rooted out of our lives and our total trust and dependency be on God and God alone. And also what he, if we trust God completely now, we're also going to trust what Jesus did at Calvary. And if we trust what Jesus did at Calvary, that simply means that we're now, have, uh, we're now in a position to give the Holy Spirit latitude and longitude to work in our lives. Do you not know that the Holy Spirit wants to lead you? But you have to let him. You have to let him lead you. The Lord does not force himself on anybody. We must decrease that he might increase in our lives. Amen. That's why my prayer, you know, my church is a witness. You know, most of the time, or sometimes, not to say most, sometimes I'll openly say, um, and sometimes I, I won't openly say it publicly in the mic, but, but within me, my private prayer, uh, every time before I stand before the people of God, is that God allow me to remain seated. You stand. Allow the people not to see me, but allow them to see the Christ in me. Amen. Because I've said this to y'all before so many times, I'm saying it again. Ministry is all about people. Watch this. But in ministry, you can't see people. Ooh, now that's something, man. You can't, man, you cannot afford to see people in ministry. You can't. When you mess around and see people, that's going to mess you up. Because when you see people, you're going to see Johnny. And you know Johnny don't mean you any good. So you can't see Johnny. You got to see God. Hello. Amen. The only thing you read, you can't work with Johnny because, <laughs> because you remember what Johnny did to you five years ago. Amen. And we got to move on, y'all. We got to move, move on beyond that and, 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 and away from that. All right. Maybe one more verse. They shall, 33, they shall not dwell in your land lest they make you sin against me. For if you serve their gods, it will surely be a snare unto you. Anything, people of God, anything that we leave um, in our lives uh, that goes against God, uh, that is uh, the opposite of God's way, anything that we leave in our lives, anything that we, does not, that we do not make a conscious spiritual decision to uproot out of our lives, will ultimately be a snare unto us, okay? Everything is, everything that um, is, is not like Christ must be rooted out, everything. Everything, tell your neighbor, get rid of it. Everything that's not like him, mm -hmm. everything that's not like him must be, must be rooted out, must be uh, destroyed. 
Amen. Must be done away with. You can say that every how you Oh, we just closed out a chapter. Oh, my God. I didn't realize it. Come on, clap your hand. Clap your hands, everybody. Put those hands together. Give God praise. Chapter 23. We have just ended. Thanks be unto God. Amen. Y'all pray for this sign that's going on with me this morning. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Put those hands together. Come on, celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. We just closed out. We just closed out another chapter, chapter number 23. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're going to stick a pin there, by the way. We're going to go ahead and stick a pin until God willing Tuesday morning for our Tuesday touch. Right here, simply the word church. Church without walls, global community of prayer warriors. We're making a mighty impact on this whole wide nation. And as you can see there, the Facebook people are able to see our complete schedule. It's right before you on Facebook. Tuesday, Friday, 8.15. Wednesday, 12 high noon, all of our times are central. Watch the time zones in your respective area. There's the prayer line number as well. All right. For Facebook people in particular, please write that down. Take a snapshot of your phone so you can have this on your phone. Forward this once you take the snapshot, forward it to people, send it to relatives in, in town, out of town, out of state, out of country. We are trying to expose as many people. This is not about, this is not about simply the word, y'all. It, it's really not. It's really not. It's about exposing everyone to the platform of prayer. Jesus said, my house should be called the house of prayer. So there's a snapshot of all, there's our YouTube channel, simply the word church. All right, there's our website stwm.webs.com. All right. Y'all see that? Praise God. And um, at this time, we are going to, um, at this time, we're going to go to our administrator, Sister Carolyn Debos. Uh, Facebook people now, as she's making her way to the mic, Facebook people are able to see um, the three ways that you can give financially to our, to our church. You're able to see it at a glance. Take a picture of that as well. We're in the midst of our giving campaign, okay? Luke 6 and 38, Luke 6 and 38. And so we, she's going to further explain that and whatever else is on her heart uh, at this time. Sister Carolyn Debos, come on, talk to the people. God bless you. Good morning, good morning, good morning, my prayer warriors. To God be the glory for the things he has done and the things he will continue to do. Lord, we thank you this morning for all that you have done. We ask that you continue to watch over us. Promise with your grace and your mercy as we travel the highways and the byways. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, what a blessing it was to be in the house this morning. Uh, there are several ways that you can give, and we ask that you consider First, becoming a member of Simply the Word Ministry by a minimum donation of $20 each month. The offertory period for our cash app is dollar sign STW Ministry, and for our pastor is dollar sign Buck Glenn King. That's Glenn with two N's, G L Y N N. We also have our mail-in and money orders, check or money orders to our post office box, make checks payable to STW Ministry, PO Box 166-DS, that's Denham Springs, Louisiana, 70727. Support our radio broadcast. We're on every Sunday morning. If you're in the local Baton Rouge area, it's WXOK 1460 AM. If you like me, I'm in New Orleans, so I go to the website, heaven1460.com, every Sunday morning from 1030 to 11 o'clock AM. Watch your time zone. We are in Central Standard Time. You can also, if you have a smartphone, download the app and just with the touch of the finger, you will be where you need to be. 
visit our website page. It's stwm.web, that's W-E-B-S, dot com. Go through and look at all of the beautiful pictures from various years of our church's anniversary celebration. And in speaking of celebration, get ready, get ready, get ready. On Saturday, October the 16th at 2 o'clock, at the McEwen Baptist Church. Come help us celebrate not only our pastor's anniversary, but our pastor's birthday celebration. We look forward to you coming and fellowshipping with us and lifting up the name of Jesus the Christ. If you need any information, please feel free to call me at 504-453-7995, and I will get your email address and forward you an invitation. We want you to be there. We want to see you. Masks will be mandatory. You must wear a mask to attend this celebration in the sanctuary. So we look forward to seeing you on that afternoon. We look forward to having a great time, and we look forward to honoring our beloved pastor for his church's anniversary and birthday celebration. I will put the prayer request that we have on Facebook. It's too lengthy for me to try to go through all of that, but please continue to pray for each and everybody near and far. You don't have to know them to pray for them. Pray for everyone. Our prayer for you is that God will continue to bless and keep you in his loving care. Continue to be blessed and safe. Back into the hands of our pastor, Reverend Dr. Burnett G. King, Sr., Denham Springs, Louisiana. Have a great day. Well, bless the Lord. Thank you so much, Sister Carolyn Debos, uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, the administrator of our church. Certainly thank God for you. Amen. Thank God for you. I want to say that uh, we certainly appreciate everyone that is. Um, and Sister Carla, get ready. Wants us to call the same one verse for us this morning in a moment celebrate our birthdays. We already mentioned, um, uh, just took a glance at Facebook and uh, just took a glance and I didn't see anything in particular, any other than we've already mentioned uh, Dr. Lawrence Norseas, we already mentioned Deacon Ray. Uh, Dr. Lawrence was uh, the other day, uh, we celebrated him the other day, birthday, amen. Uh, Brother Henry London is today, Deacon Ray is today. And uh, there may be others, but we, we mentioned those. We want Sister Carla to sing one verse, amen, to, uh, to to let's let's celebrate them at this time. Happy, 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 happy birthday. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Happy, 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 happy birthday. Happy birthday, prayer warriors. This is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Simply the word ministry loves you. God loves you too. And wishes you many more birthdays to come in life. Happy birthday. <laughs> Amen. Sister Carla McManus, Louisiana in the house. God bless you, woman of God. God bless you. Thank you so much. Listen, 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 listen well. We're getting ready to move to a close. Um, I want to um, thank God for, uh, not, not, not Sister Carolyn mentioned, she says too much for the type, and, and I believe that, it's a whole lot. Um, but just real quick, Sister Gail Williams, we're lifted in prayer, uh, difficulties with chemotherapy treatment. Uh, Sister, this is from the other day, we're still praying for Sister Tanja Jones, 42 years old, rushed to the hospital the other day, suffered from a stroke. 
All right, we're still lifting up Pastor uh, Donald Sterling. Uh, amen. My friend and my brother, Pastor, two great churches in Baton Rouge, suffered a stroke a few Sundays ago, and he's in, still in rehab. And so we must continue to pray for him and his wife and his family and his two churches, members of his church and all. We're lifting up Mother Christine Holland, the mother of our church. Amen. And uh, here is simply the word. And all of those who are still suffering, we know there are so many people still suffering in the aftermath of Hurricane Ida, uh, especially down in the Homa, Louisiana area, New Orleans, um, Jefferson Parish, Clackamas Parish, Lafourche Parish, uh, Hammond, Louisiana, Kentwood, Louisiana. These are especially Hammond and Kentwood in particular. And I've seen with my own eyes uh, when we delivered the um, the relief items there um, a couple of weeks ago. And it, you know, it, listen, y'all, you'd have to see it, you know, to 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 really to really understand. Um, you know, we can't forget about those who are in need. All right. So let us continue to pray for them. We're praying for Big C, Colin Matthews. We're still lifting in prayer. Diana Robertson, um, going back to MD Anderson on October 3rd, which is Sunday, two days from now. Father, in the name of Jesus, you've heard our cry. Oh, God, you've heard our call. You've heard our plea. Now, in the name of Jesus the Christ, our mediator and our redeemer, Lord, we pray that, that you would come to the rescue of all of these individuals, dear God, that you would meet their needs according to thine holy will. Father, oh God, heal now every sickness, every man of sickness and disease. Lay your hand upon them that they might recover and be restored back to health in Jesus' name. Lord, we give you glory. We honor you today, Lord. We lift up those who are going through various treatments and in hospitals and nursing homes and rehab facilities. Those, God, who are trying to build back from the devastation caused by the hurricane. Father, we know you have power to help them. Do it, God. Make ways where no ways can be seen to be made. God, I know you're able. We trust you now. We thank you in advance. We praise you in advance. And the church said, amen. Wednesday night, I pray you didn't miss that lesson. Praise him in advance. Wednesday night in our local church, that was our midweek Bible teaching. Praise him in advance. Probably will be a part two uh, unto that. I want to say that uh, <clears throat> brothers and sisters, uh, by way of announcements, Sunday morning, we'll be at the McEwen Church, 9 a.m., <clears throat> 7325 Jones Connor Road. St. Francisville, come on and join us. Come on and join us. We are in the building. Um, we'll also be, be um, on Facebook and uh, prayer line. Uh, you know, uh, of course, if, if, if there's no technical difficulties, you know, and uh, so, so, so be, so be best thing to do, just show up in person. You don't have to worry about, it. you don't have to worry. <laughs> those that are out of town, I understand, but, but those that are close enough, come on in, share with us our Holy Communion worship service and uh, we'll be so grateful and so excited um, to have you in the house amen we're getting ready to go brothers and sisters we love you all in the lord and there is nothing you can do about it there is nothing you can do about that amen thank you so very much amen we are getting ready to go in jesus name in jesus name all right um, I believe that's it. You all have a great day in the Lord, a great Friday. <clears throat> Make it a fabulous, faithful fellowship in Friday. Amen. You've already been blessed with Friday Fire, Dr. Lawrence Narcisse, Centralville, Mississippi, and you ought to still be on fire for Jesus. And go out and tell somebody. Amen. Go, 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 go run it. Songwriter say, go run and tell that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Go run and tell that. Go tell somebody that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Oh, my God. And he's still king. He's sitting on the throne. Amen. God bless you and God keep you is our forever prayer. If you meet me and forget me, that's okay. But if you meet Jesus the Christ and forget him, you have missed out on what?
God bless you. Love you all. Love you, Jesse. Love you, baby. We're praying for you. Love you. Love you all. Love you. 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 Love